right, welcome to this episode of the Formula Podcast. I am your friendly neighborhood host, Trevor Carlson. Uh, on this show, we interview folks from around the world, getting their habits, routines, uh, tips, how they design their life to achieve the things that they have in their field, or just if I think they're an interesting person and I want to hear their perspective. Today, I'm sitting down with my friend, Ben Haggerty. This is Ben's third time on the show. I think the first time was back in like 2015, 2016. Yeah. And you've accomplished and done a lot of stuff since the first time you were on. So you've been a filmmaker and God knows what else. You want to give a more detailed <laughs> detailed uh, intro of yourself and cover the highlights? Yeah. My name is Ben Haggerty. I'm a video director. I'm from Iowa. Originally have been living in Los Angeles for eight years about and just recently moved back to Iowa to be closer to family during some health stuff. So I just moved back. It's I've been here for a year at this point and it's been pretty interesting and unique being back in, in the hometown, but also doing the job I do in Los Angeles because I, I travel for my, for my work. But I direct a lot of, in the music space, I'm heavily involved and do a lot of like documentary work uh short form content like branded commercial work and um everything in between so i have a video production company creative studio essentially that uh just launched recently uh called not about us that i have a partner with and so we coordinate and produce project different types of skills and beyond that i'm a canon ambassador as well as a podcast host i have my own black and cream podcast that helps and focuses on educating creatives connecting creatives with uh, valuable information to help them grow in their careers which has been cool um but yeah i, I work with a bunch of different really really cool people and I'm that's, lucky. That's very, you're really underselling yourself because you just, because <laughs> you just worked on like, you just worked on Beyonce's documentary. I've seen pictures with you and Lil, Lil Dicky. I've seen you and Chris Brown. Alicia Keys, Mary Ali J. Blige, Kendrick who, Lamar. Who is the other? There's a lot of people. Who is the other dude? Schoolboy Q? I feel like you yeah, and him Schoolboy Q. had that some hilarious my... stuff that came out at yep. one point. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten to work with a lot of uh, really cool people. That's kind of like my my sweet spot is like I'm really valuable in the music space. And then brands, the brands I work with love connect, like working with celebrity talent. And so I'm kind of a great middle person to bring the brand idea to life when working with celebrity talent and directing both sides. Like I just finished like a vegan cheese commercial. I did two different oh, yeah. uh, shoots with them with Travis Barker. You know, it's like, what can, how can I bring the music spot or the music space to vegan cheese and how can we make that cool? So like I'm a, I work with EA sports a lot. And so I've worked with them on many other different games like battlefield, Madden, NBA live, all the need for speed, yeah. you know what I mean? So I've gotten to work on a variety of different types of content, which has been cool and, and keep like kind of raising the bar for myself. But yeah, we just finished a world tour, my second world tour with Beyonce and doing a lot of the video work for her and was like one of the cinematographers that like I saw a team and like we created a bunch of really really amazing stuff that ended up becoming a film yeah dude it's been pretty tight <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, so so what's funny is I don't remember when you moved to LA but I felt like I was either getting ready to travel then like to mm -hmm. leave or I don't remember what I, I don't remember if I was leaving to run a startup or uh, in a different city or if I was going to travel but we like sat down and you were like on your way out and I was on my way out and it was like I don't think either of us knew like what the hell like you you've had a ton of success in your field and it's been crazy I just don't know if at that point you would even no I had even, no clue you, I yeah uh, no idea I mean I was yeah. really involved in music before I left and making videos and then when I moved to LA it was the short story long as like I wanted to go out there to pursue making music or making mm -hmm. films or, you know, editing or whatever, however I could be involved. I was just like passionate about all of it. But I went out there, I slept on a floor at a, at a homie's house for like a year and a half, like wasn't making any money for a very long time, getting used and abused, you know, in, in the most typical uh, LA fashion uh -huh. until I could find like my stride. But, you know, being willing to go out there and have that mentality to like, strive through all that is what built my foundation and allowed me to get in the right doors and learn the right things to like build my own version you know what everyone else was doing and finding success and so yeah i had no clue but i remember back then it was just like i just need to be out in california like this is where it's gonna make sense you know so i'm glad yeah. I did. also sorry for my office space is a f oh, straight up tornado i like i'm rebuilding ah, a whole no server this place is a, yeah it's not yeah yeah all good uh i'm it's in a pretty podcast set i'm in my sister-in-law's uh, bedroom recording this so, <laughs> so clean. thanks man clean. I'll, yeah. I'll let i'll let her know she'll be she'll be yeah. happy said that i think what I, what I really admire about you is you like made a big bet on yourself like you just were kind of like 
this is what I got to do. And then you didn't really know what's going to happen. And you, yeah, I feel like you made a big bet. I think that's, I don't know. I have a lot of respect for people that do that. So I think yeah, you've done that too. It's not easy, dude. Like we've got, like you said it, like I live kind of a weird life. It's like, yeah, so do I. It's like this. It's not easy to explain to a modern day person that clocks in on a nine to five. And I get it because you are about to dip out and go to wherever you want to go in the world and travel and explore. And most people are like going to work for the fifth day in a row that week and are complaining about it. And I, or they love it, like whatever it is, but that routine is yeah. there for them and we have this very it's so hard like a friend just asked me a pair it's one of my best friends and they're planning a bachelor party for him and and it's not until like august or some shit and everyone everyone in the group chat's like yeah yeah that sounds awesome cool like they're blocking off the week and they're taking vacation time or whatever and i literally have had to deal with this multiple times where i'm like i can't i don't know what's happening next week like my schedule can be so off the wall like right at the end of the year i was i thought my year was done and then it went to like oh now i have to shoot the vegan cheese commercial and then right after that i flew to brazil with beyonce and shot a bunch of stuff over there and then i flew home and then christmas happened you know what i mean it was like and i didn't see that was all within like a six day time span and so it's so hard to predict and it's, you know, it's just part of it, but I can't ever explain that to someone. And you always feel like I'm an ass. Like, I'm like, hey guys, yeah, like I want to say yes. And I know I need to be there, but at the same time, like I cannot commit all the way because I don't know, you know, if I show up, cool, I'll sleep on the floor. I, that's kind of what's happened is I just, I expect that now when I go to bachelor parties or like things like that, I'm just like, I'll just sleep on the floor and contribute yeah. to the, like the total cost of how much the Airbnb or some shit, but yeah. don't, don't save a bed for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, it sucks. Yeah. 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 It's probably just a chapter that I'm sure once I'm sure in the future, when you guys get rocking and rolling, have like bigger, longer running projects at your studio, maybe it'll calm down a little bit. No, nope. you never know. No, you, okay. you just don't commit. It's just, they're going to be, that's a fun trip. I'm going to do what I need to do to be there. But at the same mm-hmm. time, like, like if I committed to this, like last, like a year ago, like if it was this last summer, I mm-hmm. was in Europe on Beyonce's world tour, filming the film that ended up going in theaters worldwide. So like I could, if I would have committed then to doing a bachelor, pro- like I would have had to be like, yo, I'm in fucking Glasgow or wherever. Like yeah. I can't come. So it's just part of the territory of the job. But I, what I think is it's for us. Like this is mm-hmm. the type of lifestyle and career choice that mm-hmm. makes sense for like our DNA, I think. And many people have that sim- similar DNA. Yeah. But it is interesting living in Iowa again, because so many people here don't really get those opportunities to do those things. And so it's weird to explain to people or like I always make fun of like me and my, my friend Tim Dodd who has a YouTube channel and called Everyday Astronaut. And so like he's got a really huge channel and that's what he does full time. And that's already hard for people to explain. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's like both of us have this weird thing where like any time during every single day we'll text each other and be like Call of Duty. And then we like get on and play <laughs> Call of Duty for like an hour and a half or some yeah. shit. And it's like, yeah. wait, like while pe- we just take time or you'll see us out doing some random shit. It's like, I don't know. I don't I don't know the weekend i don't like you know i don't think about those normal things i don't think about clocking out it does that's just not part of the my cycle which is so interesting to have that yeah but it's hard for people to understand i don't know what i'm fucking talking about right now well i think it's just like lifestyle choices where it's like i just can't imagine you going and clocking in because i Mm. i feel like you would same with me like there there's been moments in time where like you know business has been hard or something and i'm like you know Somebody would be like, yeah, you know, I get paid this much. I get this much vacation time a year. I get to do this and that. And I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I'm, like, it's way I'm like, like, I'm like, man, what am I, am I doing this on hard? And then, and then, you know, I'm like booking a ticket to somewhere and I'm like, you know, I, I can remember a few times where like I was, I went out to this like temple and I stayed with a bunch of monks for a bit and did like, you know, no, silent meditation. Well, we weren't silent. It was just like a multi-day long meditation thing. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'll take this over like the paid vacation. Bit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like- All that shit. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it's like you're building your foundation to make mm-hmm. this traveling thing make sense. And yeah. At the end of the day, we hit 45, 50 years old, and you'd be like, all right, I'll go get that fucking job that gives me vacation and security and all this shit. Like, yeah. who cares? Let me just go do it now. Like, you got so much life left. Like, what a crazy thing to say you were in a temple with some monks kind of doing silent meditation. Like, no one gets to say that shit. So it's so cool to prioritize it and take that risk 
And like you said, yeah. you were betting, like I was betting on myself. You're betting on yourself. Like it's, I've always said that. Like when I moved to LA, it was a bet. Like I bet mm-hmm. myself I had like three months worth of expenses. And I was like, let's just go see if I can do it. Otherwise, I'm going to deplete that fund and I'll come back and beg my mom and dad to sleep in their fucking basement. And you know what I mean? It is what yeah. it is. But the bet worked and I hit. I can't, I wish I could do the exact same thing with sports betting because I love doing it and I'm horrible at it and I never win. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Well, yeah. We won't dive too much into sports betting. So I have a few things. So, so one, is man I, I just have so many questions that i've been thinking of as you've been talking so one is like if have you hit a point where you hit like a rough patch like let's say you know you got off the floor you got your own place you got a bed you got some mm-hmm. consistent gigs and then you hit like maybe a dry spell or you ran into some challenges and then if you did like how did you work through that i feel like i mean the beginning was all challenges like mm-hmm. yeah being on the floor like I lived in a room with like four people and the it was in a house that was like a creative incubator. It was kind of like a Silicon Valley. Like it was like mm-hmm. this house where they had creatives, musicians, all this shit. So like mm-hmm. I had this space and I had an air mattress. My friend and his girlfriend had an air mattress. Mm-hmm. There was a couch. Someone slept there. So like at some times it was always occupied. And this room did not have doors that shut. And it happened to be right by the front door where people would go in and out all the time. So like I was working 16, 18 hours a day, sometimes like 24 seven, just like constantly on the clock. So when I come home to hibernate for a second, you got the door slamming people walking in with a bunch of people talking like it was not ideal, but it was like the best thing in the world for me because it got me there. And I think like throughout the process, it's like, not getting paid and having to like learn how the industry works and taking risk and like putting myself out there. It's all kind of been, it's always a challenge. That's part of my career, but also that's like my favorite part of my job is I'm like a problem solver. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, and I thrive in that, in those spaces. So I think, um, rough patch what is like the career. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) it's kind of like an insane job that you have no way of like, predicting the future on it. Mm. Like I had no idea I would be who I am today. I think that who knows where I am five years from now, like moving home was a huge, you know, scary thing because it's like my dad got sick and he's battling cancer and I want to be closer to home during that fight. And I value that more than anything. So I was like, how do I make this work? And I'm going to go home. And then there's the little bug inside of you that's like relevancy if you leave this town people will forget you all that shit (laughs) and so there's like that huge thing but then as soon as i moved home i was like working on a machine gun kelly dock and then shortly after that i'm like flying back and forth to la doing you know and then all of a sudden i'm on tour again it's like what are you talking about bro like i was lucky enough in those eight years to have established my name in a way that makes people want to call me for jobs i've never i don't even like look for work it's just it shows up every time a job ends, there's like a new job that shows up. So it's like, I think that by dealing with those rough years and the time spent building and the right time in my youth and all this shit, like, yeah, I just, you got to take that as a positive. Like all that shit is part of the process and all that shit was, is like what the job is. And like, if I didn't have to figure out how to get out of sleeping on a floor on an air mattress and find out how to pay rent, like my first rent was 1200 bucks a month. And the rent that I had paid before that was I lived in my parents' basement as a rapper making music in their closet with like my friends. And then before that, I had like lived in in assortments of houses throughout college and shit. But like maybe I spent 300, 275 bucks on rent. Like I never had to spend any amount of money. And then my first rent in LA was $1,200. And to pay that amount was like, bro, ah, I'm never going to be able to afford this. You know what I mean? Like, cause I wasn't getting paid and it's like, oh, okay, cool. 1200 becomes normal. Then 1500 becomes normal. And then it becomes easy to do two or three K it's like, okay, but that's what everyone's paying. Like, that's just the normal. So you have to figure out how to make that thing work. So it's like, you're always trying to beat those challenges. And I think like, once it becomes normal, it's like, cool, I conquered that level. I'm moving on to the next level. Like, let me go um, figure out how to battle this thing. So it just makes you like really stronger and mentally prepared for any type of challenge as you escalate and as things grow. And I don't know, I also ramble. So fucking cut me off or you can do this little number to shut me up when I'm talking. If you want to take over to your podcast. No, no, no. This is all good stuff. I think it's because I, so I'm asking because I feel like I I reached a point. So I have like a company that does marketing and it's done decently well. It's basically paid for everything since 2016, 2017. Right. But it's, uh, I don't know. I feel like with the projects and things like that, that come in, they're just so normal now that I don't feel like it's challenging or like, there's no, I'm not excited where I'm like, oh yeah, fuck yeah. I'm going to like, 
run this marketing campaign. I'm like, I'm like, no, I already, I can already tell you how it's going to go. Like I can do it in my sleep. It's mm-hmm. not that much fun. I shouldn't say, I mean, it's kind of fun when, when you get a W, but it's, it's not like, yeah. there's no, there's no excitement anymore. Right. So mm-hmm. I'm moving into this other area where it's like, I've been doing, I've been kind of playing around on YouTube, shooting travel videos, some travel companies and other companies have like, I've done trades for videos that have turned into like a solid amount of bookings for them. That's not the dream. The dream is I want to, like, I've spent time with tribes in different countries, like staying in bamboo shacks and like learning about their culture and history. I've, you know, I've slept on the ground in (laughs) many places and just like spent time with local indigenous people, people who uh, you can't really relate to them hardly at all but they're just like so so fascinating and interesting it's just and it changed the way i like look at the world how i look at society in general like we kind of look at these places as third world right but then when you look at because they make all their own stuff they maybe don't have everyone doesn't have their own tv with netflix and four cars in the driveway but then when you talk to these people they're not like oh my fucking job or you know they they don't yeah they're, they they're just like they, they value they're just, life yeah they're really happy like they're alive they're living everything they have they've earned they make all their own food by hand every meal and so i think as i've met these different people around the world it's changed my perspective like i spent time in bosnia with people who survived the war there spent time with people who are political prisoners i've spent time with like in malaysia it's very illegal maybe i won't put this in the actual show but it's very illegal to gay there and i have one of my really good friends and his boyfriend live together but if you get caught like a lot of bad stuff happens so like i've spent time with them and their malaysian royalty that they run around with that are also gay and if they get caught like they they might not survive right so you get to see all these different walks of life and then but then it's like how do i turn that into something where I can share those stories or tell those stories in a way that's that's meaningful to me where it's not like hey here's this sick hotel <laughs> and like here's here's like this you can you can go do this uh do this thing here it's really cool uh there's a there's like a nice pool <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah um so i'm trying to figure that out so that's that was why i asked that question because not because i don't feel i don't feel like i'm in a dry spell i guess but it's more like i feel like i need to i'm in a point where i know i need to make a change but i'm not sure how to make that change. You're looking at it wrong because if you think about it, your marketing company, yeah, you're like able to predict how the thing's going to go, the project's going to go and you feel mm-hmm. like it's kind of like it's on a repeat cycle and it's doing well but it's repeat, but it's like because that made you feel that way, it made you explore doing this more and mm-hmm. doubling down on whatever this is or at least just like you're basically like in college. Like you're going mm-hmm. and you're doing shit and you're just seeing like you're learning you're meeting people, you're kind of testing ideas with marketing, but for content about people Mm -hmm. in those cultures and those places. And so you're like exploring right now, which is cool. And then you can like, that's going to be able to like narrow your focus to be like, oh, actually, I'm absolutely obsessed with doing this thing or I want to dive deeper into it. Because I know you, so you had sent me a video that you worked on and you were asked, you wanted to talk about it in this. And I think what you can give more context or you give context to that real quick. And I want to explain something. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. So I'm not throwing my marketing company under the bus because this client actually was a mar- a client through marketing and they do adventure travel. And they were like, yo, you've been asking me for years, you know, go on a trip with us, make a video, make some content. And finally, I was just like, all right, you know what? Like I've been saying maybe for a long time. So let's just, let's just go and see what happens. So a little backstory, I trained so hard for this hike. And then, because they were like, it's high altitude. It's going to be really hard. Like cardio-wise, best shape I've been in in a very long time. Dude, as soon as I hit still that altitude, died. I was sick as hell, man. I was yeah, so yeah, sick. Yeah. <laughs> you look you look sick. And then, <laughs> dude, I, I was I'll, like, dude, fuck this trip. <laughs> I, I have a clip that I'm putting on my own channel where yeah. I'm hooked up to oxygen. And like this woman's like, how you doing? I'm like, and I'm just not making any sense i'm like oh, i'm so good as i have like it, there's a candle because there's no electricity so it's just candlelight yeah. flashing on my face with me with oxygen laying in bed killing it man <laughs> right right, right. <laughs> but you show uh, but i think what was cool is like you so okay so you make this video it yeah. was for a hike in peru yeah right yeah and so it's like a six minute video for like a travel company and right. kind of showing what it's like to do this trek right and um and so what i thought was cool and I think this plays into what we we're talking about with your marketing and and you trying to find your itch or your next your path. It's like 
you give the Anthony Bourdain experience on a budget for you on YouTube. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. you are able to, you kind of have, you're making a video that has this personality that gets to go and explore, but also relay information to someone who may want to explore and do these things. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that could literally become an entire full-time thing if it's not already. Like, it's like, yeah. to me, when you watch that stuff, it's like, yeah, you have to go there. You have to go and then make the content. You have to then, you know, do all the work. But mm -hmm. I, like I watched, there's one dude on that I watched and this is his full-time job. And he goes on YouTube and he travels around. His name's like Trek something, T-R-E-K something. I can't remember what it was, but yeah. he basically like travels and does like experiences in class like he'll go and test like a first class flight to from wherever to wherever here's what it's like to be on the longest flight ever and he goes and goes through the entire experience start to finish of what it's like to do those things and he'll buy he'll pay for like a twenty thousand dollar flight or probably gets them for free now but yeah. like he gets to go and do these experiences and he's just like showing you what it's like i'm gonna go on a first class cruise with this thing and go out to the blah 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 and he gets to test all this stuff but he's basically probably was interested in travel and now has turned that into an, a way to spread shine light on xyz so i feel yeah. like for you your channel could go two ways it's like you could make content like that where i get to see from your perspective right and i know you've done that before but i'm getting to see your perspective of like what it's like to go to these places but also like how you've probably found out that those types of videos are really beneficial to um organizations like the one you worked with to like mm -hmm. go and experience that stuff so like i had notes watching the video you asked me to give you notes so i was like watching through it mm-hmm and if people haven't watched the video, you can just probably link to it in the yeah, show yeah. notes. Well, but like, I think when I'm watching it, you are taking me on the experience. Like I, I have literal notes where I could go through and be like, this is what I would do, or this is how mm -hmm. you should change this. But I think it, it it's a cool angle of you being this person who's traveled. You're not just like a bullshitter that's making up. Like you've traveled to not get paid. You've traveled yeah. to literally go out and learn about things and be a part of experiences and just actually. So that's as credible as this college will teach you how to become blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's the same shit. Like you've gone out and you've actually put in, you care about this. So I think you have a leg up versus someone that's just trying to travel to find the glitz and the glam or whatever it is. There's people out there that want to do these experiences and they could lean on you to be an educator and a an, uh, person. That doesn't mean you have, you could still have your entire company. Your foot up is that. So I had different ways to that I think you could make those videos more impactful. But I think um, I liked watching it. And you were talking to me before we started the podcast. You're like, I'm not a videographer, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to be. You just point <laughs> and shoot. But honestly, my, none of my notes were about the quality of the video. Like oh. the video quality was fucking great. Oh, sick. As long as you know the basic settings and you know how to capture and stuff. If not, I want to see more, more B-roll. I want it more of what the experiences are. Like you talk about at one point in the video, you talked about the nighttime and the stars and being able to see the stars. And I think you had a, a time lapse or something. Yeah. But even then, it, you could be having this section where you're talking about how beautiful it is to be out in the middle of nowhere and to look up and see the stars, see the galaxy. And while you're explaining it, you had one shot. I want to see five shots. I want to see you walking mm -hmm. with the headlamp and showing a little trail or maybe you're having a tea and it's the nighttime and you, you see yourself. You're setting up yeah. the tripod. You have a filmmaker there with you capturing yeah. you do these things. Honestly, it's like, how do you bring, go watch, Jesus, I can't think of it, Anthony Bourdain's show. Mm-hmm. How can you do a stripped down version of that? And you're like doing it, but I think there's ways that you can add a little bit more things in there mm -hmm. to make it more impactful that won't be, they're not heavy lifts. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like thinking of entertaining a viewer and like providing more eyeballs on the things you're talking about to help like really, really dial it in. I could go into more detail, but I do think like, where do I go next question? This shit could be, you fucking love traveling. Yeah. You can do your job from anywhere. So you obviously yeah. can stay in touch with this. So even if it's a slow start, but I really do think if you continue to dial in these videos and maybe yeah. it's whether it's your channel uh, mm -hmm. that I go to like learn about experiences or I, or you're providing this content for other people because that's just as valuable. It's a big move. It's a cool, yeah. it's a really cool angle. Yeah, I think, man, the idea of just being able to to like drop in anywhere. I mean, I, I'm saying that, but I fucking do it anyways. Like it's just you do it anyway. I mean, That's what I'm saying. I, I'm just not getting. But dude, it. like I want to, I want to take a trip to like I want to go. Me and my girl need to go do, do a straight up vacation. Like we need yeah. to do beach style, drink and eat shit and fucking chill. Yeah, vacation. And I want to go look up. Like I literally just said it to her the other day. We're the opposite. I want to go and research and look at anything I can get my hands on to like learn about yeah. where I'm going to go or whatever to find the best bang for the buck. And she doesn't care. But I was mm -hmm. like, oh, should we hop on YouTube and like look up videos about like fucking Cabo or wherever yeah. the hell? I don't know. And obviously like that's a, a lane, but I think like 
there are going to be people who want to go and do whatever the thing is, right? Like, mm-hmm. say there's people that are walking up the Appalachian Mountain Trail or whatever, like they yeah. start from wherever and move to wherever. It's like even you could go and document someone that's doing it. Maybe you're not doing it, but like you have the ability to adapt and understand those people where you could be a host that then takes you on the journey with that person who's actually doing the trek over the like X amount of months and you can maybe fly in and check points and have them document. And then, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you could build an entire way of using other correspondents to help you travel the world without you having to be everywhere at one time. Yeah. Um, and you already know about systems. So like being able to get the contents, the hard part, and then being able to package it, it's like you could build a system to do it. But I do think, um, yeah, dude, I don't know. Like from, from dude, this like video, <laughs> I love it. This uh, is what I like to do. I'm a problem solver. I'm like, saying, yeah. all right, all right, cool. I, I hear what you're saying. You're obsessed with just going anywhere. You found your fiance by traveling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you find common interests with people and there's, millions of people on the planet that want to do same shit as you this is the other thing a whole demographic of people that you have to think about and you could create your content for is people who will never do shit that you do like there's why the fuck is this giving me a thumbs up <laughs> i don't know um, i've never seen that before it's it's not doing it for me, bro. i gotta update my i gotta make that stop um <laughs> if you're listening we're just like if i give a thumbs up on facetime it like makes stupid what shit happen the hell? Like, oh my <laughs> yeah, god there's fireworks um But what I was going to say is like, there is a lane of creating content for people who will never even do it. Like there's people like I, during COVID, especially I fell in love with like two YouTubers that just camp. And like, there's one guy that camps out of his Jeep. His name is Nate Sims. I think is his name. Dude makes super cinematic, super gorgeous day in the life of him traveling and camping out of his Jeep. And he just takes you there. And sometimes it's like a 30 minute video and you're just listening to 10 minutes of just natural sounds. He doesn't even fucking talk, yeah. but it's so polarizing. It's so interesting. It's so cool to watch him cook a steak in the fucking middle of the mountains. Right. And then there's another guy that just makes the worst filming. It's all like his phone, a GoPro, mm-hmm. he holds it in his mouth, but it's him talking the whole time. His personality drives the video. Yeah. But what I do is I watch those things and I go, I'm never going to go out to Lake Michigan and fucking ice fish for three or four days and catch fish. I don't even like fishing or whatever, but I like the idea of watching this person do this thing. So I'm getting, I'm getting a fix, an experience that I am becoming educated on some shit that I'll probably never do. Yeah. Yet that that can gain. These people are getting millions of videos, views on their videos. You know what I mean? Yeah. That becomes their full-time job. So all they have to do is live for you, which mm-hmm. is an interesting angle of creating content. So there's yeah. like ways that you can double dip on this process that is valuable in multiple lanes for your client, for yourself, for yeah. a viewer. It's fucking cool. Man, all right. So I, since we're I going down this path, I just want to, I just want to like get as, I'm, I'm selfishly going to try to get as much info from you now as I can. <laughs> um, so yeah. All right, so let's assume that you're in my, like if you pretend you're in my shoes, I just want to know how you would think through this. And I hope that this is helpful for whoever's listening. Maybe they're like, want to start a YouTube channel or do some other shit that's cool and they can hear from you how they would do it. So in my mind, like I want to go from, like I, I got paid to do this trip. It wasn't like, you know, I couldn't live off of it, right? It was just like, I got to go to a cool place, got yeah, paid some money. Get, yeah. Yeah. Um, how would you go from, that point where you can basically go do this stuff for trade for expenses whatever to something like let's say you wanted to eventually do it full time or become a like you wanted to actually turn some of these things into like a professional like show like or a documentary film or something like that where you maybe maybe it's like a docu-series or something how would you if you were in that situation how would you approach that i think that i would not try and make it a docu-series mm. i would go to social media mm. i would think like because everyone makes travel shows like mm-hmm. you just all you have to do is be like all we need is money probably a celebrity facing talent mm-hmm. and you so now you take zach efron and you take him to fucking blah 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 and yeah, he gets yeah, to experience yeah. what it's like to be with you know yeah. these people and do all these things that's it that's just the it's a template at this point like yeah. all right can we how long will it take oh you only need zach for six weeks i'm just talking about zach because i could just i'm just thinking about the <laughs> yeah. travel show he did yeah, it's yeah. like all right six weeks he gets to knock out all these things you have a whole production team there's a budget there boom and does yeah. it but i think that there's an ongoing series that could live in your own network youtube mm-hmm. You're using clips to bring people to watch the longer versions of it, or maybe you're multitasking or you're multi-purposing content, or you're thinking, I'm gonna go to Peru, do this trek. Here's four videos I wanna make for shorts or for reels and TikToks, where it's like me reviewing food. 
And then mm -hmm. I'm pointing those people to watch the longer, come see what it's like to be. So you're like parlaying content to all kind of circulate an audience and build up a foundation. But then, yeah, maybe the whatever Peru Trek was paying you, but it's like enough to like maybe whatever, just a little bit of bread and you're just coming out there to like experience this thing. Yeah. But you're offsetting that by having an anchor charging ad in the middle mm. of the video where you're able to say like, hey, anchor is how I'm able to keep my phone on and check my offline maps and blah, blah, blah. Right. So now you just found a way to like work in an ad deal, which doesn't bum anyone out because we're all used to seeing ads every five seconds yeah, all the time. Like, mm. right. So I think that you're able to find multiple revenue sources for exploring these things where you're able to say like, cool, like, where do I want to go this summer? I want to go do a trip to Antarctica and do like a boat thing around. I don't know, some make yeah. up some shit. Now, how do you make the content out of it that you want to get out of it? What's like the cost for it? And then how can you make money? It's like, dude, you're going to make money back on that content. The beauty is that that now that that video is done, it will live on your channel forever. So when I decide I want to go to Antarctica five years from now, mm -hmm. that video, hopefully, if you've dialed in this, the title and the subject and the thumbnails, if mm -hmm. you've um, hit all the pain points, if there's a blog attached to it, like you want to own those searches. So that way I'm like, I find that video and that video is just going to continue to make you money. You know what I mean? Like right. it can sell merch. It could sell whatever those tools are. Maybe there's like travel things that you want to, you have a PDF on like travel guides and you mentioned that in the video and like that thing's just always making money. Mm -hmm. I think that those are now your Geico ad that would play during your docu-series mm -hmm. on Hulu or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's a smaller version of it. And it allows you to have a, a, a footprint where now like maybe it's your fiance Mm -hmm. you can i don't know what she does but if you go on a travel thing maybe she's getting some b-roll of you doing the activity yeah. and now you have an extra set of hands but now you have a travel buddy and you know what i mean like it's dope you're like creating the dopest scenario of all time so i think that that's how i would approach it i think i think i would do it's just it, the bit that you have to do as much as you possibly can you know what i mean which could yeah. be from investment from your current company and it may involve a lot of sleepless nights doing it all but i think if um you i don't know dude i just People go through things and want to lean on other people's experiences to make them happy, right? So yeah. if you can explore shit and now I can either, I can associate you with, and that's why we talked about before. Do we upload the podcast? Do you put your shorts here? Do you do whatever? Yeah. Separating, creating channels, that's, you have to be so specifically dialed on what you're trying to output because if I come to your channel and then I have to listen to you, me talk about how to build a channel, I don't give a fuck about that. I want to see you do a <laughs> trick. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like. Yeah. So then all of a sudden I become turned off. I might unsubscribe. I stop following the channel, whatever you start, yeah. whatever. But I think if you really hone in on what that is and take me around the world with you, like you got to watch this Chuck Kennedy. That's this dude's name Trek on Kennedy. YouTube. Sorry. You're yeah. Good. I just, the guy is like a British dude, maybe or something. No, maybe that's not his name. Not Chuck Kennedy. That's a comedian. Damn it. What the hell is this guy's name? He, uh, do you edit the podcast? Like if I'm sitting there trying to find something, you cut out the fat. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Okay, cool. His name is Trek trend trendy Trek trendy Trek trendy he's yeah. got like a million subs yeah um Trek trendy yeah so this guy he's getting you know a million views on a video eight million views on one video three million views on another video yeah all he's doing is doing a trip all he's doing is flying from fucking la to dubai yeah but he's he is taking you from hello i just woke up in the morning this is um, my experience getting to the airport there's a person they meet you here they take you here they show you how to put your bags in you get this champagne here's this caviar the caviar is okay it's not as good as what it's like to fly out of la's airport now you're on the plane and he's just literally going play by play by play on what that experience was and i'll just go through like sometimes i'm just bored and i see his 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 fucking thumbnails pop up and i'm like oh he's on a cruise ship maybe do i want to go on a cruise do i want to go do a hike do i want to go bike across iowa for rag bry? do i want to go you know what i mean i don't know but like because he's creating these experiences it's getting me interested in doing something that takes me out of my normal cycle if i'm sitting there doing accounting every day and i just got done with tax season i want to take a vacation you know what i mean where mm -hmm. will that vacation be the easiest thing and for most people in you know these towns and shit that like like where we're from it's like the easiest thing is to go to florida and sit on a beach and that's mm -hmm. what my mom and my dad, they do. My dad doesn't want to do the beach thing, but my mom lives for the beach. You know yeah. what I mean? But I'm like, there's more beaches than just Florida's beach. Let's yeah. go somewhere else. Yeah, dude. You know what I mean? But they're not exposed to those things to learn about all these other opportunities besides like hearsay. So you're that problem solver. You're the person mm -hmm. that 
teaches me how to do that. But you're giving an even deeper. It's not about going to stay at the Ritz Carlton. You're like, dude, we could stay in a bunker with people or whatever the fuck you called it. Not a bunker, uh, like a hut or like a TP or some shit with like, you just go and do this really cool, raw, real experiences. It's a super long winded way. I feel like free to cut all this shit out, but (laughs) you know what I mean? It's cool. Yeah, it's definitely cool. It's um, so you would, instead of even thinking about going down the, like the docu series or any of those routes, you would focus on social, you would recut all this stuff. You would pretty much just go hard as possible in that, in that realm. So, and you, you talked a bit about like, here's how you could potentially monetize. So you said like sponsors, things like that. How would you, so, cause I know you have some experience getting like brand deals, things like that. This is a little out of my element. Cause mostly I'm just like, yo, I'm coming here. I want to shoot a video. Let me stay for free. Here's what you get. <laughs> it's like, like, yeah. and then they're like, yeah, sure. Why not? Just some context. Like the Muay Thai camp we did, I got that comped and then the book or the video we shot. So they get about a thousand dollars per person that goes to this camp and stays there and trains. And they've probably booked over a hundred people just from the video we did. So it's like, I feel like there's something there where if we were approaching brands or some of these places like, yo, this video is three years old and it's still getting a shit ton of views and bookings and all that. But I'm curious as to like, how would you go? Like if you were to sit down and be like, all right, I just have a blank blank sheet here how would you find those deals or what how what's your approach i guess um i mean for that and i speak out of like a lot of the times i'm brought in by a brand to Mm -hmm. work with a talent yeah influencer whatever so i've seen deals happen and how people like can get certain things out of that stuff so like dude if you're you know if you're gonna go do that camp right like yeah the next time you would go, you'd be like, hey, how about in the video, I mention a code that gives them a discount on that $1,000 camp and they get it for 900 bucks or whatever. Mm-hmm. But because I'm giving them that code or whatever, I'm able to get a percentage of the sales mm-hmm. from using from my code. And mm-hmm. you'd have to like maybe some places like that might not have the ability to track codes and do all that shit. So you'd have to find that. You have to figure out how to solve that problem. Yeah. But like being able to get commission, being able to have affiliate linking, mm-hmm. like all that stuff will add up over time. And yeah, you're creating massive exposure. So that's why it's tough where maybe the hotel can't find the value or have a budget to pay you 30 grand to come do something. But yeah. SeatGeek does. You know yeah. what I mean? Or whoever the fuck. Like if it pairs with what the content is, especially if it's like if your content about travel can pair so well with Pen- uh, Patagonia like you know what i mean like i wear patagonia like and i see it all the time if i watch fishing that guy traveling camping camping he's the ads are around camping material so Mm -hmm. huge companies that have big you know big big pots of money are saying sick this guy's going to use our jackery battery charger thing so that when they're out there for like 10 days they could charge all their things and the guy could work on Mm -hmm. his videos and his laptop in the woods so it's like that makes sense that that they would do that and they'd probably gift him that thing and pay him a decent check or maybe there's you get the check like right now we're doing something with my my girl has a tiktok for our cat right like our fucking cats <laughs> i laughed about it at first and then the thing fucking blew up and now she's got like a hundred thousand followers and she gets millions of views on these videos. it's insane <laughs> and like i just talked to a company that about getting uh ad splits on a video like they're like hey we want to do a video with you for this thing and so they're giving her the product they're giving her cash to make a video about it yeah. and if that video blows up it hits mile markers. So if this video gets 250,000 views, she's getting X amount of money. If it hits 500,000 views, she gets X amount of money from them. So like, mm. that's just their deal for what will happen if it turns up. So it's like, there's so many different ways. And I think it, everything's going to be case by case, especially when you're traveling, because you can't go stay like that trek. They may make like 500 bucks to go do that little trek. And that includes food and all these other things. Like they may only make a, couple, a little bit of money, but like that money might go a long ways where they're at in Peru. Mm-hmm. So it's tough to be like, hey, you give me a shit ton of money to talk about you because I could get a million views on my channel. So that's why I think you have to go after the corporations that mm-hmm. want to tie themselves to these things or these experience, or maybe it's an airline that gets you there or it's yeah. a, you know, whatever. So yeah, it's, yeah, you got to think of it from an outside perspective and then case by case basis. But like, yeah. I really would just say like, dude, if you're going to go, like if I want to go do that trek again tomorrow. Yeah. Think, what's the obvious thing? You need fucking hiking shoes. 
You yeah. need, maybe there's a company that specializes in yeah. custom rain jackets. Mm-hmm. We talked about rain jackets. Make sure you get your rain jackets. Speaking mm-hmm. of rain jackets, I want to thank today's sponsor, Rain Jacket Company. And <laughs> yeah. the the reason why I like these rain jackets because they're so light and they pack in this fucking vacuum sealed bag and blah, you know, whatever. And then I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, I should probably buy a couple of those for this fucking Peru trip I'm about to do now because yeah. you convinced me. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So it's it's kind of finding a way to to double dip almost. So like like we were talking about like. I was telling you I'd send you the affiliate link for Cast Magic, so I'm thinking even with that, it's like I'm using it for everything, and I'm like, there's other things I can use like affiliate links for as well, where it's like, yo, yeah, I actually wrote the captions and shit like this for this video using Cast Magic, so if uh, if you create shit, like just click my link and check it out, and you get a free month to to try it. I but guess that's like a separate. I think that's like um. That's almost. If I came to your channel because you're the nomad right. and you go travel the world, yeah. I, who gives a fuck about if I'm a content creator that wants yeah. to do what you do? Okay. Okay, cool. But that niche is so small compared to I want to travel. I want to yeah. be just like Trevor and I want to travel the fucking world. Yeah. So you giving me an ad about that doesn't make fucking sense. But if you gave me an ad about, yo, here's a utility knife that's so easy to pack in your, in your check bag mm-hmm. and it's great because it's got these tools and blah, 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 blah. So when I'm out and I'm doing these things in remote locations or here's a GPS tracker, so blah, 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 blah. You're always safe at all times and even, no mm-hmm. matter even if you're off, whatever, all that random shit. And then what you do is you always link them to the same place to get that mm-hmm. discount or whatever it is. And that could be a general like, here's my whole affiliate affiliate landing page where like anything that you want to suggest or affiliate link to because there could be shit that you don't link to on your Mm. page uh, in that video that people still might find beneficial so if i come to your website or wherever link tree and i see a bunch of things in there and it's all discounts or it's all like suggested things based on your travel experiences here's all the blah 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 that i've found to be valuable with me a backpack a fucking suitcase yeah. like whatever it is and you're always just boom that money is just always going to come in because you're always linking yeah. out to and you could always switch them out like maybe you find a better deal or maybe you find a partner that's going to give you a better rev split like i had a friend that he was doing youtube videos teaching after effects and mm-hmm. shit like that right and he had a deal with a company that had like after effects templates but they also had music they had videos it was like yeah. they kind of encompass all of it and so he would go they would give him like a 50 50 cut on signups. Mm-hmm. So he would just make videos about how to do XYZ using that template. And then he would naturally be able to talk about that website. Like, I basically got this from this site and did XYZ. If you sign up, I have like a 20% off code, blah, blah, But really, what was happening was if I signed up for like a year and it was like 350 bucks or whatever, or maybe no, it was like a monthly, his monthly, maybe it was like 50 bucks a month. I'm getting 50 bucks a month from that subscription for the, perpetuity of however long their subscription is so Mm. if i can convince if this video gets a thousand views and i get 20 people to sign up for that it's pretty good chunk of change and that's just one avenue so i think if if you look at like the experiences that you want to focus on it doesn't mean you have to change and be different and focus on different types of content right it's just like how can you make the obvious easy for people to absorb Now, now that you're saying it, it's actually really obvious it's like okay so if I'm like hiking, right? Like I did a ton of research before I bought boots for this trek. I had to buy so much extra gear. I had to buy raincoat, poncho, like trekking pants. I had to buy like long underwear and special socks. This is three. Now you just added a new video to your deliverables. Like if I'm going to Peru to do a camping trip, yes, mm-hmm. there's the trip. Then you can have an entire video about just deciding what to buy. Yeah. There's how to pack for a trip how to pack for a fucking trail you have to think of the captions of the yeah, titles, yeah. But whatever how to do that and then in that entire video it's you going through your backpack mm-hmm. and it could be you you could shoot that shit on the mountain there you could shoot that <laughs> you could shoot it you know what yeah. i mean like that's that was one of my notes is like you have um i don't want to get to that yet so you could have a video that's just about the peru trip packing and that could be a six minute video that lives and you can cut that down in for shorts. And now you just got a whole nother thing to get views from. But also that's even better because it's like everyone is expecting you to plug some shit. So I want to know how you did it and what was the best tool. If you spent two weeks searching for the perfect boots, I don't want to spend two weeks doing it. So I'm going to use you to do it. And then I'm going to probably click the link and that's like how I'm yeah. going to buy my shit. So oh, boom, that just made fucking more money for you. What's funny though is my boots ended up sucking. And it. now you make a follow-up <laughs> video. You know what I mean? Like, hey, here's all the things I did. This is why they sucked. Here's what everyone on yeah. the trail suggested to me. You know what I mean? Like all that is like, yeah. it's, it's basically it's like um, you're making, it's creating the content for you. Like mm. that's a pain point that you 
and, and traveling there and you put it off for so long and then all the things that go into it, it doesn't need to just be one video. Peru could be a five. There could be five videos right now. If you go to MKBHD's YouTube channel, because this is what I was watching before we started. Yeah, yeah. He just got the Apple Vision Pro VR mm-hmm. goggles. So yesterday I watched his video because I'm curious because it's I want to get one. I was curious what the he had an unboxing video. I'm like, all right, cool. This is the first person to really reveal this thing. So let me go watch that. I watched that whole video. I watch it while I put the YouTube video there. I'm taking a shower. I'm watching videos all the time because I just I need to have my brain thinking. He made a video about unboxing, but I haven't seen him experience it yet. And then I just saw him post another video about it. He's going to milk the fucking release of this thing for like 10 videos on his channel. And yes, I might not care about the unboxing video, but I'm maybe I'm curious about how it f- how heavy it is. He can make a whole video just about the weight of this thing. So if you can make multiple deliverables about one thing, like you might just go to Peru and maybe you made one video for them, maybe you make one video for yourself, that's not enough. You could do an entire, and maybe that's what we know you for. It's like, dude, I'm gonna do these trips. I'm gonna think about how I could have perfected the trip afterwards. I have like a whole post trip afterthought video, you know, yeah. and maybe that those are, these are the series. So when you go do trips, I can expect those things from you. Mm-hmm. And I trust you as a source and you only credit, you know, you're only giving credit to products that you trust and you value. And it's pretty sick, dude. I want to do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude, come on, come on through. <laughs> yeah, be tight. <laughs> I was actually thinking as you were saying that I've, uh, I've done these like masterminds before with, um, with different creators where I didn't sign up because I, I thought I was going to be a creator. I was just like, oh, this seems cool. I'm going to learn some stuff. And I get to sit in with a bunch of smart people. But I was, as you were talking, I'm like, yo, Ben could probably be making an extra 20K a month if he just if he just was like, hey, we're going to do a weekly call for an hour. I'm just going to like tell you where you fucked up and yeah, fix. And you're going to pay me a thousand bucks a month. 20 people. It- it sucks. It's, hey, instead, hey. I turn it into a black no cream podcast. I give everything for free. I have, I did it all backwards. I didn't. I didn't. No, dude, you it's, can. Is what it is. You can still do it. Like black with no cream is like your is like your teaser content. If you want, if people want you to look at their shit specifically, and to pay and to like have your valuable time, you could still do that. Like, still give it away for free. But I'm sh- like, dude, there's people that I've sat in with where they charge twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars a month. And I feel like you're, you're like, you could easily have an extra 20 K a month. No, I appreciate it. I, <laughs> I'm sure yeah. I know I could, I it's bandwidth. You, yeah. It's yeah. also understanding the pain points of a creative, especially when they're getting started. And I feel like that's kind of what our niche has been is like for yeah. these creatives that are getting started, but there's so much shit once you get started that you have to learn that goes mm-hmm. above and beyond that. No one really understands. Yeah. I could probably, I know I could coach. I, I dude, I bought bwcuniversity.com and I had it in my don't like GoDaddy for like three years. Cause I was like, I'm going to build a school, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm going yeah. to build a fucking school. And then I just got rid of it. Cause I'm like, nah, I'm not, I don't have fucking time for all this shit. <laughs> I'm so busy, bro. It's like, but I do, I agree with you, but let's, tr- let's go back to you. Cause I okay. feel like this is cool. All right, all right, all right. I think your, what you can do to improve it is make multiple things about mm-hmm. the one thing, right? Yeah. Narrow on your focus of what you do. Is your channel a travel thing? Is it interviewing people that you're curious about? Cause that's the reality. I make videos. We're talking about how to make a YouTube channel or maybe make a travel video better. If people came to watch the Peru video and they're curious about traveling, they could give who gives a fuck about this? Separate these things. You know what I mean? Like separate them and then you can parlay them. So if you go and do a trip or maybe your trip is like, I am going to go spend one week with a creative boot camp and I'm going to show you what it's like to be a part of a mastermind with create content creators who are trying to level up their content. Part of that could be that you interview me, the creator boot camp person who has insight, right? So mm-hmm. we have an interview that could go to your podcast channel that's separate. And the way that you can work this into your travel content or that travel channel or that education channel, whatever you want to call it, maybe you clip a section of our interview. It's like when you watch a documentary and you're seeing someone's, do- you know, you're leaning yeah. on them to explain like the, how the murder happened. And like, they talked to the the FBI person. They're like, yes, yeah. and they did this X, Y, Z. You're cutting away to those things, which mm-hmm. is great because it's like, oh fuck, you have a podcast. Like you're subtly hinting that there's more somewhere else. Like, yeah. or maybe at the end of your videos, you'd be like, Hey, just so you, uh, if you're curious about my interview with Ben about the filmmaking part of it, you should check out my full interview with him at blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like, So you're kind of using, it's like bringing, involving these other subsidiary channels in your main channel, like organically, Mm -hmm. which will then help people want, the people that do want to hear more will go and find it. You know what I mean? So it's kind of a cool way to do it. And an example there, Matt Diavella is a YouTuber, minimalist documentary director. He Mm -hmm. did both of those documentaries on Netflix. He has a great YouTube channel where he explores challenges, right? And Mm -hmm. I think this is kind of in your same thing. It's like, he'll say, I'm going to do 
ice shower or uh, cold showers for 30 days in a row. And I'm going to document the process. Mm-hmm. I want to know how that changes my mindset. Will I continue doing this? Blah, blah, blah. So anyone who's heard about it, they find that video, boom, they watch it in the video. It may be like a 30 minute video about that month, a 30 minute video. So in the process, he'll talk to people like a scientist or an educator or someone who's a guru in, in cold showering or whatever. Yeah. And he'll talk to them for information. So he may cut to them to give them a quick fact and then he comes back to it. And then he was like, hey, if you want to check out this full in-depth hour long conversation with this person, it's on my Patreon. And that's how he was able to like garner a Patreon following because they would be able to support his channel, but also get some really important like scientific shit that probably wouldn't perform well on his YouTube channel, but on his Patreon, it's for those who are like really curious about, you know, the showering or whatever. I'm just using yeah. it as an example, like, but like how that can change your mental state and blah, blah, blah. So I think that those types of things, like if you look, you just have to look at like, what are other people doing that works, but how can I apply that to what I care about, which is I want to travel. I want to meet these people. I want to go in and do these experiences that are off the grid that I'm curious about that may change. I may be very curious about what it's like to be, to stay at a fucking Royal hotel with like a fucking royal family right Mm -hmm. but that's what's cool is i trust you to go there like anthony bourdain like i just started watching i know i'm talking about him a lot but like i watched roadrunner and i and i never really watched why am i blanking on a show what is this show called uh Uh, parts Parts unknown Unknown. i never watched parts unknown when it was out and so i just i don't know i found something that got me curious about him i started watching the doc i became like a huge fan of him and then you watch the show and what's so cool about the show is like he takes you to some like really beautiful island. And then the next episode, he was happened to go somewhere like right when they were in the middle of a war. Mm-hmm. And so it's like glitz and glam war. And he and he's able to make each episode just as interesting because he's really taking you there and taking you on an experience of understanding what this is like. His curiosity is exploring. Mm-hmm. I thought it was all food. It's not all food. You know what I mean? Yeah. He sits down, he gets to learn about what it's like to fucking run a business so small, but whatever, this and that. So it's like you become that narrative. Mm -hmm. for those people and that's what's really cool about it and so i think i know i'm talking a lot but to go back to the notes of your video yeah so if you guys watch the video whoever's listening to this Mm -hmm. because it'll make it easier when i'm giving these notes but when i was going through it like i want to see you at the beginning quicker Mm -hmm. like i see beautiful drone shots and i see the spot you're talking about i want to see you say the first thing like it says i'm in the asagante what's it called asagante asagante I'm in Ozangante at the beautiful Peru trek, and I want to see you on the fucking top of a hill telling me, I know you probably are sick as fuck to your stomach from altitude and shit, but when you can shake that, giving me the intro, like you script this in your head. When I'm there, I need to do that opening shot because they need to see me in the environment versus a drone shot, which could easily be stock footage. So I might click out because I don't trust you. But if I see you and connect you now to the idea of what this video is, I am here. You're going to learn about X, Y, Z. I was able to do this for this much money. And that's why this video is interesting. And I'm like, oh shit, okay, cool. But I, I want to see you earlier. I want to see you. Maybe you put a. Uh, I think also animation would be nice in your videos. Like maybe it's like a lower thirds that just says, "I'm Trevor, uh, explorative, blah blah blah, whatever your title mm-hmm. is." Like you give yourself validation, and then I think like you're like this. We've climbed mountains that go from this. Like watch a fucking Mr. Beast video, bro. Mr. Mm-hmm. Beast is doing it at the top, like the highest level. Like his videos used to be little challenge videos he's taking animation like where he'll be like we're gonna go from this mansion we're gonna see what it's like to stay in a dollar house a hundred thousand dollar house a million dollar house a hundred million dollar house and when he does it he's using animation to take you from the shitty shack and it like zooms out on a map and he like hired an animator to like show that other thing and then go to the bigger one and it's just like he could just say it and it's insane that he's doing that but he had to take it a level farther. This dude's literally taking you to a $100 million house, but he has to make it more engaging for someone to watch because he knows that that's how people's minds work. They need to see visual stimulated things to like stay intact. So if you're saying like, look at these mountains, you have really cool footage, drone footage. You could literally just have like a VFX thing that happens where you have an animation and maybe it's like attached, like the text is attached to the mountaintop and it just says the elevation name. Little things like that Mm -hmm. will, I think... um, would help people just stay attached. So establishing yourself, establishing what I gained from this video, um, just the top, the top points of like what you're going to address throughout the video, because you end up doing it, you end up addressing it. But I think if you're like, these are the six things, five things, whatever that you're going to gain from it. And I'm seeing you there telling me that Mm -hmm. um, is better than me hearing a voiceover. It's better than me seeing you with a white wall and a fucking harsh light on your face. I think that that's more entertaining. And so and also, like you did that recap stuff where you're kind of recapping it, you're, but that's the narrative. Mm-hmm. So I think if, if you can, it's tough to do it because sometimes you're learning as you go. So even if you were to 
learn as you go and then find a more interesting way to recap it. Like either it's yeah. a beautiful setting or maybe it's your podcast and you make it seem like you're explaining this on, because that's another deliverable. Now I just went and did the Peru Trek. So here's my podcast about the Peru Trek where you talk at length about it, but you're also subliminally using that as your interview footage like mm -hmm. just the footage of you explaining this shit so now it feels like you're seeing the podcast set and you have this environment where you're able mm -hmm. to do the thing so now i just i'm watching you but i'm also realizing maybe there's a longer and you can mention that hey mm -hmm. if you want to hear me talk at length about this uncuffed with my friend that i traveled whatever like yeah sorry i'm just brain dumping because i'm just trying to think of it all uh you're good but i hope this is fucking helpful i don't know who's who's finding this podcast it's, helpful it's really helping me it's really helpful i have one question which is yeah yeah, yeah. so as i'm so one of the things like that I really enjoy focusing on is like, is like the people I've kind of started describing them as like the helpers. So people who are doing stuff for their community, people who are doing stuff for like the environment, people who are volunteering, um, just like interesting people who help their community or who have like, who do something that's like positive in their area. How yeah. would you, so I know we're talking a lot about travel, but if we were to kind of, if you're adding that element in, how would you do that? You do, so you'd have like one video that's like, Hey, I'm going to this place. Here's my experience. And you do another video where it's like, Hey, here's this cool person. And about, it's all about them. Like, how would you? Yeah. I mean, you could maybe like, while you're there, part of it's like, Hey, I'm going to take you in the field with this person. Mm -hmm. and, and like you're highlighting this person. So if you can tie it, like everything's about, hopefully it can tie to the master mm -hmm. thing that you're going there for. but if you also want to just be like, here's what it's like to be with someone who makes bread every day for a tribe. Yeah. Like that's their job. Their whole yeah. living is around the process of making bread. So now you're giving me a kind of like a glimpse into that person. You're interviewing that person. You're interviewing the people that uh, benefit from the bread, the people that are eating the bread and why that, why this person is so valuable. And then you go through the process. This is how they make the bread. They're using the, they're out there in the fucking woods and they're doing it on some fucking, uh, you know, it's yeah. probably not like uh, sanitary or whatever, but that's yeah. just how they live. So it's like you're able to document that where now you just make this cool piece about this person that you got to meet and learn about throughout the process. And yeah, I think that that, that stuff could play into it because you might mention that. Like maybe that's part of your long your hero video. Yeah. Where you're like, I got to eat with this person and learn so much. And like then you cut to the conversation of them explaining something. Mm -hmm. And that's just part of like a short part of your hero video. But then that could be like another asset where you're like, you're, maybe you link in that point in the video, there's a link that pops up that takes you to like learning more about what it's like to be a bread maker in the mountains of the Andes or so. Yo, I don't know. I'm just yeah, making yeah, shit yeah. up. But you know what I mean? Like, I think that that's a cool way to make it because you can just make so much from one trip. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, Which that's is unique. True. I might only be interested in making bread, bro. So I might not be interested in the travel part, but because I found you diving deeper into this person that does this unique thing, mm -hmm. I could become um, maybe that that's how I find your channel. And then maybe that gets me into like watching the other stuff, you know, everything can pull in a viewer. And the other thing is like, just because you upload one doesn't mean that I've seen it just mm. because I've subscribed to you doesn't mean that I'm getting that video. So by your fifth video or your first short is like the, the time I might become aware of that you uploaded something. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't think about it that way. I just think like if someone becomes a fan of my, what I do here, what can they expect from me? How do I best explain the channel? And that goes back to like your YouTube channel trailer. Mm -hmm. what is this channel for? What mm -hmm. will I, what will I get if I subscribe here? You know what I mean? What can I expect? You know what I mean? You may take yeah. me on a trip. You may take me to a farm where you're from. It doesn't like, it's just like, I'm just going to take you kind of where these places I find unique. And if you're into traveling, if you're into uh, finding unique experiences, yada, yada, whatever, that's what you get here, which is the best way I think you could uh, describe it to someone so that when they, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's interesting. So I was thinking about like the trip, like doing a video of going home where it's like, I'm, I'm from like the middle of nowhere in Iowa. So we're like, I have this footage in India of like cows walking around and just like, like, it's just kind of, it's just very, it's like a stark difference. Like you go to Iowa and it's just like, here's a cage in a pen and there's 50 cows in it. And you walk down the road and there's like cars driving around cows that are just like walking down the road, you know? And yeah. so I think being able to like reference those things and like the stark differences in realities and just being able to, I think the main thing is don't overthink it. Like it's really simple when you actually like, it's probably a, when you're a creative person, it's probably very easy to go down to like, not to maybe spiral a little where you're like, okay, 
like i need to get this i need to get this and when it's like yo dude what about your shoes like you're wearing shoes right you got socks you're wearing like special pants for this hike all that shit you've got a phone charger for you got a battery pack you've got uh You've got a hat, <laughs> you know, you've got like you all brought, you bought, Maybe you bought like a, a more affordable travel laptop that you yeah. know, like if it gets stolen from you or maybe it's a smaller footprint versus a Mac. You know what I mean? There's all these things that go into it that those are the reasons why we know you're getting paid. It's mm-hmm. because these things, like we all need to have that shit. So like, I'm not mad at the channel for promoting these things because mm-hmm. I'll probably find it helpful. But if you're promoting like, I'm trying to think of some random shit like car tires or some shit and like whatever like you know what yeah. I mean like if some co- Pirelli or whatever like wants to sponsor your channel it's like that doesn't yeah. really fall in line with it so and I think also when it comes to YouTube it's like ch- those channels will there's a whole grip of companies like that and it's so easy to reach out to these companies now especially like LinkedIn and all these ways you can find anyone right like yeah. everyone's flaunting their job so if there's a social media manager somewhere there's a marketing person mm-hmm. and you just get a hold of them and say this is what I'm trying to do yeah i'm gonna do a series of videos this year i plan to go to this country this country and this country and i think that your product would work in all those travel videos every Mm -hmm. time i go to a country i output 30 videos you know what i mean where i could Mm -hmm. attach your product to those videos here's the roi here's where i think we could grow if any of these go viral who Mm -hmm. knows what the opportunity is that's why i want a commission cut and it's just a no-brainer bro like i think that's great also, yeah. if you had more questions, but I was going to, I wanted to go back to your video too. Cause yeah. I, just, I was, when I was riffing it, I was like, it's fun to like take these into perspective. But I think right. like, um, there's an interview shot of you with the white wall. Yeah. And so you're kind of talking there at the very end of your video, you're out in like a yard. Yeah. Right. I think like if you are out in different places to do it, like if you watch old Casey Neistat videos, yeah. He's a great YouTuber and his video would be very simple. It's all about New York. Mm-hmm. So instead switch his content for like, a Peru trek, mm-hmm. but like he go, he's in New York and he's trying to think of what's the story I could tell for today. Mm-hmm. And so he might talk about just, uh, I don't know, like what it's like to edit a video, but he'll do it throughout the day where he'll be like out and about doing things. So first off, he might mm-hmm. start the first little sector of his like comments while he's riding a skateboard. Then he could be on like a bridge outside in New York, or he could be on a park bench. Mm-hmm. Then he's in like a coffee shop and he's like talking to the camera. So he's like, scripted it out and he's giving these little like pieces but he's in different locations which makes that interesting Mm -hmm. so i think like if you're able to document in real time what you think your script might be Mm -hmm. like hey here's what it's like camping each night and Mm -hmm. here's me talking about it while i'm here in my tent like it's so cool camping out like every night we have a tent and blah 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 this and that happens and like we have the ability to do it and you're just seeing you do it i think that those things will help develop um it just makes me feel like i'm there with you like i don't like the afterthoughts i want to hear your real-time thoughts and then maybe Mm -hmm. i recap it at the end um i also thought maybe at the end at the very end you do start like kind of doing a recap you basically said the sentence um that's pretty much about it which is don't ever say that because to me i'm like oh the video is done but there's still like two minutes left i'm like well you just said that's pretty much about it so i'm like what the fuck else do you have to talk to me about but i think if you were to it's almost like the things that you are recapping at the end of your video, if you can hit those points throughout the video, like if you can get to those, you don't need to do a recap. And I think if you did have to do a recap and you wanted to do recaps, maybe you're highlighting those things. And like, there's a way to use animation here again, where you're like, here's like the things that I loved about this trip. Here's the things that I wish I would have known about, whatever. But like, if you were going through it, I can't remember exactly what you say in the video, Mm -hmm. but you're like, I don't know what you talked about, but like, I think you could have like lists, right? So like your thoughts are scripted because I think that's what you end up doing. You were saying like, they have guides. You want to make sure that you've done the training guides before you come here. Like, seriously, it's like pretty intense. Like they really value doing the training guys. And then like right after that, you're like, they also have tracking guys. They have training guys. Like you're saying guides. You're talking about these guides like multiple times, I think, where like if you just said, tracking and training guys why are those important Mm -hmm. um packing the right clothes why is that important boom 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 and you just super concise what you're talking about and you're showing me that there's like multiple things that you highly value highly value versus like being kind of just like an afterthought where you're like yeah this is important this important anyways thanks for watching the video bye like i (laughs) think that if you do that it will help Mm -hmm. me want to hang longer because it shows that you have intention of talking that in that moment Mm -hmm. um but i also think a lot of that stuff could go into the video so it's not like a two minute recap of the experience it's like this is all part of the experience like this whole video is like all those things i'm learning and ways of telling you and educating you about it throughout the video which will make it more impactful and me want to watch longer which is like what the whole goal is you know yeah yeah i think that makes sense it's like 
I think it just comes down to a bit more planning ahead of time as well. So like when I'm there, like knowing some of the things that I'm going to cover, like yeah, I, I might not be able to do everything, but I can at least do like most of it. Like there's not going to be, there might be some surprises, but it's, it's like, I'm going to have clothes. I'm going to be spending money on stuff. Uh, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be eating. So it's yeah. like just covering those main things. I'm going to be bringing a bag. What's in the bag? Show me while I'm there instead of before or after. And then, Dude, uh, yeah. You yeah. could do a pre-interview with the the guides, right? Like just doing a do this with a mm-hmm. guide just so you can learn about what to expect and all these things so they can be giving it to you. So now you have like this more in-depth, mm-hmm. like real life Google experience with yeah. that person where they're explaining it to you and you could even recap with them at the end. And then you have mm-hmm. two hours of content that you could pull from to help describe like the pain points. What I wish I would have known when I did the Peru trek, that's its Mm -hmm. own video. And that's you talking to the person after the fact or whatever, you know what I mean? Like all that stuff's valuable. Right. It's, there's so much you can get out of it. It's just like, yeah, I think pre-planning as best as you can, but also you'll start to like, it'll become kind of secondhand nature where you're like, Oh cool. I'm going to go do this trip. Here's Mm -hmm. all the ways I could think about this trip from a content perspective. Right. So I'm gaining the most out of it and giving. Because at the end of the day, you want to shine light on these people and and show like what, why it's impressive or why, like why it's important to know about them and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're educating, you're giving an inside look, you're doing something that's rare. There's so many different reasons why I would want to watch this, that video, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Man. I'm gonna have to come back and like watch this and take some more notes because I feel like there's yeah if I can take just watch it later. <laughs> there's gonna be so many. I just feel like there's gonna be so many ideas because I as I've been preparing for this next trip, I've got a few trips coming up where so like I'm going to Ecuador in June. This is gonna be really interesting because I'm going on a hike again, but it's a collaboration between two trekking companies plus like a cancer uh, organization. So they're like, yeah. you know how they do like, hey, we're going to raise money for cancer uh, research. They do a fundraiser and then they go climb a mountain or something. Right. Like that. right so right. I think this could be a very interesting trip because it's like like doing the trek itself. Like I'll do a video for each organization. And then for myself, I can just basically be like, OK, here's what it's like to like go there right now, because it's been pretty tense. Like there was there's some government was battling the cartel in Ecuador and a bunch of people canceled their January trips because it was like, they don't want to get caught in the middle of a gang war. Here's hoping it's calmed down by, by June. <laughs> and, uh, well, that's also exposing, like, it's also a good angle too, because you're exposing drama. Like yeah. you're exposed, like, Hey, here's why everyone is making you fearful. This is what they're making you fearful. Here's the reality. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. Like obviously you have to have common sense, but anytime I talk about traveling, like, to family members that don't ever travel they're like oh isn't it kind of dangerous there isn't this terrifying isn't could you be safe there i'm like be safe it's so safe like i the like what do you mean you know what i mean like bro I, i've been because robbed because of fucking news i've been robbed like twice in the u.s i've got my car broken yeah. into in cedar falls twice had like windows broken out you know how many times i've been had anything stolen from me i guess well I did get a little. It's gonna happen anywhere, yeah. bro. It's gonna happen anywhere. It's like, but everyone thinks that they're in the safest spot. Right. No, you're not. Yeah. It's, no, you're not. It's like, I don't know. And they're like, "Yo, like, be careful there." I'm like, "Yeah, I feel safer in this place that like is really bad on the news than I do like walking home from a bar by myself in like Des Moines." You know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like, getting jumped by someone or whatever. Yeah, like, like, it's like, yo, that people don't do that there. They're like, no. Great shit. And that's what's cool about your channel is like, you give a, you can give a seed of understanding. Yeah. So I think that that's what's unique is like, yeah, if you're going to go to Ecuador, it's like, okay, cool. I, I, you owe deliverables to these clients, mm-hmm. but how can you multi purpose that content for yourself? Yeah. And then, or how can you use these as like beta for the idea of what it will be where it's, yeah, like you can go and make stuff for these people. The idea is that you would eventually transform to like, it's not even for you anymore. Yeah. I'm making this content for my channel, which gives you exposure to your place. Yep. So you're just hoping that I talk about you on my platform, mm-hmm. which helps you entirely. So they could repost, they can take social cuts, they can do whatever, which maybe that's always a thing. Like anything that I use for social cuts, I'll give to you. So you're not having to do extra work on shit that maybe is like so like, boring to you or like you're like i want to do the thing i'm passionate about which should help this thing or person or place you know what i mean so for sure i think these trips that you do this whole year 
should be like beta testing the idea of like, yeah, you're doing those deliverables that you're promising them to do the trips, but you should be making the content in a way that where you want to be, like make the content of where you want to be. Like, I want it to be like, I only came here to do these. I don't want it to be that I came here to make these deliverables for them. Yeah. So go above me on to like plan the, that trip out, script it out. What are all the things that you could do? What are products that you could be talking about? And for now, just use Amazon affiliate links. Like yeah. literally just, you don't even have to have brand deals yet. Like, I don't know. I feel like, I, I did an interview that'll come out on my podcast with Sam Newton, who's a can, another Canon ambassador. Yeah. And his whole career is around travel videos. And he does it like, how can I go make really cinematic videos mm -hmm. of places? And he said that's how he basically got to start was just like messaging, emailing people and trying to mm -hmm. get product to like pay for the trips and stuff. And he did it that way. And that was, he didn't have a following. He wasn't anyone of stature. And, and these companies just like, they make these products, but they're manufactured, they're created, their headquarters are in fucking Massachusetts. Right. You know what I mean? Or like wherever. And they don't have access to a gorgeous jungle or whatever. And if they did, they'd have to go and do an entire campaign or they're big enough that they have like multiple chapters throughout the country or the world. So you're giving them an opportunity to have like a unique perspective of their product in a place that is hard to get to. So even without a following, even without any of that shit, you're able to still get some of these things. So if this company is willing to pay for you to come fly there, be there, do whatever, yeah. what's one product that you can attach to this trip that could also give you now an extra few thousand bucks or whatever it is to your bank account Yeah. in addition to already going there, you know? All right. You mind if I text you and, I, and be like, yo, Ben, this is what I'm thinking. And then you can be like... This is where you fucking. I would up. do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell yeah. me, tell me what. Yeah, go for tell it. me what I'm missing. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's all good. And then, yeah, I'll I'll throw one of your affiliate links in the video too. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even have one, but I yeah, dude. Much. I think I think that's it. I think it's just like it's right there, bro. And yeah. it's something that nobody wants to do. No one a will take the time. Like either people want to travel. Like you used to want to travel. Then you learned how to pick up the camera and use the camera the best way, and you still feel like you're not confident in it. So throughout this year keep doing what you're doing, keep educating yourself on how to make better videos yep. and tactics, right? So like keep learning about using slow motion and doing, you know what I mean? How can I use slow motion? How do I shoot better slow motion footage or yeah. better drone shot, whatever the fuck. And then, so you're doing all that work that no one wants to do. You're going to the places that no one gets to go to or no one takes the time to go to these places. Everyone has like, dude, you really think about it. It's like if someone works a full-time job for a company, they're getting like maybe two weeks three weeks of vacation total and yeah. they're that or whatever it is. I don't know the actual number, but they have that. And that goes towards Christmas and all those, the holidays or their kids get sick or whatever. So like, it's very small. So then like when we were growing up, we never took vacations. It would be like every couple of years, then you take a vacation and it was like a huge fucking deal. Now it's, and it makes sense because I can't take off time. I, yeah. And then the money that we saved up, I, I don't want to go and blow it on a trip to Disneyland because what happens if that fucking roof needs to be replaced right. or whatever. So like these people don't get a chance to do that. So it's very tough to like pull that trigger. But if you can give people an experience, they can live vicariously through you. Or maybe one of those trips becomes their dream goal and they want to do it. They're going to follow your blueprint on how to pull that off. Yeah. And they've watched those videos a million times and that inspired them to like spend the next four years saving up for that one trip to go experience what it's like to do some shit off the grid or whatever yeah, the fuck it is for sure and i um, and i yeah i just think i kind of felt like i was almost having to like stay very focused on what i was doing but it's also it's like but there's so many things because it's because i have these conversations with people all the time and they're like yo i'm going to cancun i'm dropping eight grand for five days or like for a week and i'm like what the fuck i'm like yo here let me plan your trip <laughs> what the hell it's your what the birthday. hell balloons are just happening i didn't even do anything <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> sorry i guess you're having a party over there um yeah i'm like bro you can let me pick your place like let's not go to Can cancun let's go to like somewhere else in mexico or somewhere else in south america so it's like the same flight same flights cost the same you're gonna go to a place that like i've been to cancun i hate cancun i think it's like the worst place in mexico let's go to let's go to a different spot you want to spend eight grand Bro, we're gonna. If you spend eight grand, you're gonna have the most insane experience in this other spot because instead of getting a three star hotel, we're gonna get, you're gonna get a five star hotel with a butler, and like also there's like all these experiences and these villages you can go to, and there's no crime there because there's no tourists. There's not that many tourists. Right. Like you're gonna have the best time of your life, and and then people are like I didn't even know that was like a, an option. I'm like dude. 
get the fuck out of these places get out of these places (laughs) no but that dude also you just created another sponsor you need to find a travel agency that focuses on these things yeah and then that's a company that should value you as a spokesman for them because Mm -hmm. you don't have fucking time to go plan everyone's trips you can do variations of it where now like you could literally that's a video Mm -hmm. hey guys this is me in cancun this is why like just go to cancun for three days highlight all the good things, but all the bad things about it and why you should go over to this part of Mexico Mm -hmm. to experience what it's like to do X, Y, Z. That video budget is 10 grand. Mm -hmm. Spend 3,000 bucks or 3,000, whatever in Cancun and just show what I can get at a miniature scale or literally do a comparison. I have eight grand. I'm going to spend in Cancun. I'm going to show you what eight grand gets me in blah, 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 blah over here. And that you save up the money Maybe you get a brand deal to pay for both of those, right? A Cancun yeah. hotel pays for all your travel, all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. It's the equivalent of spending eight grand. And blah, this company does it over here. The travel agency is giving you a bag because that's the sponsor or whatever. So yeah. flip-flop company is it. And then you go fucking do that video and you're showing why this is so valuable to go away from these like staples or whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? But that's just a video. Dude, it takes you, that's a week and a half. Yeah. In, in the illest form of you testing what it's like to fucking, you know what I mean? Have yeah. a good time. Yeah. It's so, it's the amount of conversations where I have where people are like, yeah, I want to go on a trip. And, but like, I'm just not that excited about going and going to like see the Eiffel Tower. I'm like, bro, uh, like going to Albania, it's an extra hour, two hour flight cost a quarter of Paris. You're going to have a much better, ex- like you're going to have an insane experience on the budget. There's no tourists there. So you're going to have like this raw experience. You can go hike, you can go to the sea, you can do all this stuff. And people, yeah. you're going to have the best time of your life versus like going and seeing a, a metal tower in the middle of like, I, I like Paris, but it's kind of like a dirty ass area of the city. And it's like, you yeah, want to yeah. spend all your money on that? Or do you want to go have like the best adventure of your life? Yeah. For the same budget. Or stop in Paris, spend two days and then come over here for the best time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like go get your taste because maybe someone's never been to Paris. And like, again, you're talking to people that might only have a finite amount of time to take a trip. Right. right? So like if they do, they only know Paris. They see the Eiffel Tower in every movie. Like they they tie it to that. But if you can find a way to hook them to be like, hey, I'm in Paris, but this is where I'm going to go to truly enjoy my time over here in Europe. And then you show them what it's like. It's like. But yeah. also, these are all pro- these are also products and shit that you could curate over a course of time throughout your, all your travels. Is building like the guide to life of travel or a destination website where you're able to like coordinate and develop trips that are through algorithms and shit to like help yeah. people find these. But then you start, you're gonna, you know what I mean? But it, I don't know. There's some shit there, but also it's easier to just let people that are really good at those things do those things and yeah. you be the the spokesman to direct them to where they need to go. Yeah. So if it's travel agencies that can help you, you figured all this shit out on your own and through research, which is the hardest part. So I think through your videos, you're exposing the research in real time to make it easier for people that are dumb like me to figure out how to have a great time in Mexico. Dude, you know the, what I mean? The funny thing is, is I never did any research. I just showed up most of the time and was like, and then people well, would be part of the research. Yeah. It's like, people would be like, Hey, you should go to this place. I'm like, all right. <laughs> like I haven't booked a hotel, yeah. but I got a flight that lands there tomorrow. <laughs> but no one's no one's gonna risk it because they could also go there and it could be the fucking worst time of all time. You know, yeah, and they true. could get there and fucking <laughs> hotels are creepy or people are like it's not clean or it's not whatever that like they they people, especially when they're spending their money, bro. Especially when they have a finite amount of money to spend, they're so scared that mm-hmm. they that it could be a horrible time and so no one's gonna risk it they'd rather spend eight grand and know for a fact that they have that beautiful hotel room even if it's small with a little window that shows the ocean versus risk it and go to some fucking off the grid spot and have a mansion that oversees with an infinity pool even though it's like so obtainable but they're just afraid and they don't do the right research and they just want to you know so i think that you're you're building confidence in people to take these risks with your content and and i think you have to learn also the balance you may find value and things that are so 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 niche and you might have to offset it with like some more popular things right mm-hmm. so like you might have to play into some of the shit that you know that there's like i may be i may only want to travel once in the next two years and i'm trying to do a beach trip and you yeah. may have offered that right an experience of a beach trip or maybe there's a couple different variations of beach trips that you've talked about in your channel so i might go watch those even though that's not like your main goal is to always talk about the beach trips Mm -hmm. but you take those hits every once in a while because that's gonna that's gonna be the nut the nugget that gets me to your channel yeah where i'm like all right cool like he also goes and checks out these like random fucking places in jungles and shit like (laughs) oh this is cool you know what i mean so maybe that inspires me to want to do some off the cuff shit in the future but 
at least I got my fix off and yeah. you were the person that helped curate that experience. So I think mm -hmm. like you have to play into that tent pool content that um, will help bring in viewers because mm -hmm. you doing you being in the fucking place with monks and being quiet isn't everyone's dream vacation, but it's pretty cool. So yeah. I think like if you got there, people can at least learn about that, but you got to hook them with the bigger fish. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, you're giving me a lot of ideas. So I'm, and I think one, this is one thing I'm, th uh, I'm realizing as well. Like I'm, since I'm spending a lot of my time on like the marketing company, I'm, I've been outsourcing a lot of the editing, but I'm realizing like for the amount of content I want to make and for like me to actually dive deep into it, I need to probably spin up my, my DaVinci Resolve and, and like, and just start. Yes and no, dude, but if you, out. like Anthony Bourdain wasn't fucking editing his own videos sure. you know what i mean like i think that at a certain point like if you're looking at scaling this thing yeah you could do five trips a year yeah and make 30 videos mm -hmm. or you could do 15 trips a year and make 150 videos mm -hmm. how do you get there you find an editor that you can partner with every day you're filming and uploading if it's about speed and time whatever or if it's about if it doesn't matter if you go and log like if you do like five trips in a row and you bring all that footage home and then you just go work with your editor endlessly like you can delegating is how you're going to be able to perform at a higher rate. Like mm -hmm. eventually what you should do is you should treat it like a production. All right. I need a producer, a researcher. I need someone that can help me coordinate and think about all these ideas. We know the general buckets, but like, what are all the experiences? There's someone that could do the research. Maybe that's part of the experience that you're gaining from the travel agency that you work with or someone that, you know, whatever it is, or it's like you, or if there's another person that can understand how to like lean into locals and find experiences and shit, like delegate all those tasks. So that you, your job should be that you fly and you go around the world all the time mm -hmm. to show us what it's like to be around the world all the time. Yeah. But if you're fucking going around the world five times a year, it's like, all right, cool. Like I, he took five trips, but like, I need, I need a lot. I need to see you. And that's why it fucking parts unknown is so crazy. Cause I do like when you watch his documentary about his life, this guy lived in a suitcase for 300 some years, 300 some days out of the year. Mm -hmm. And he loved it. That was his normal. And he thrived on it and he mm -hmm. found value in that. So because he was willing to do that, the cameras could follow him mm -hmm. and they could produce more and more and more episodes. There's like fucking eight, nine seasons of that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know how many seasons there are, but there's a lot of episodes about him going to different places around the world. Yeah. Um, that's traditional. This is untraditional. So I think you're able to expose more and it's going to involve a team. So as you start to develop the budget from brand deals and so on and so forth, you can outsource more. Yeah. Knowing what you want is key though. Like, yeah, knowing and understanding how to edit is a very valuable, which will help you communicate better to your editors. Mm -hmm. But I think you should be focusing more on the idea of developing the content, like where to go and take things versus fucking... Editing. really diving in like yeah. yeah or if you really want to get into the cinematography it's like okay maybe you start to travel with a shooter maybe you find shooters that can go with you on these trips to help you get better content so you can just be hosting you can be talking to people you don't have to spend so much time setting up your own tripod but part of the beauty is that you've simplified it so if you can get away with it just be you but outsource everything else production thinking about stuff travel make your life easier you yeah. know what i mean so that's yeah that's my biggest tip okay that's a good tip. I think, yeah, I think you're right. Cause I, I do a lot of this stuff even myself still. And there's probably some aspects of it. Like, like, honestly, I don't like doing the research. I like just rolling up and like figuring shit out on the fly. And then if I, if I spend a bunch of time figuring, like doing the research, I'm just like, I'm so bored. Like, I don't even want, like, this is not fun. I wanted to be there already. Like I want someone else do it. Yeah. I want to go ask the dude at the cafe, like, yo, what's the best spot in town to stay? Like, I'm looking for this, this, and this. What's the best hike around? I don't want to look that shit up. I want to go ask people that have already done it. And then well, you're speeding up time because you could have someone be you yeah. asking the person at the cafe, but instead of you walking into the cafe, you fucking call them now and say, <laughs> Hey man, I'm coming here. Yeah. Is there any way you could give me just I'll send you twenty bucks on your on your to your Venmo right now if you just give me some ideas or whatever. And you're speeding up the idea of getting you to those things. So that yeah. way you could be like, Cool, I want to go find those people. You can still go to the cafe and talk to these people, but you're just you're finding a way to like structure it a little mm -hmm. bit more that's more practical for you to develop the content on it. So like if you're like, I'm going to go there, you're still going to get the same output. You're still going to mm -hmm. meet people. You're going to talk to these local people. They're going to tell you where to go, but you can do it in advance so that when you're there, you're like highly productive mm -hmm. with your output of what you're gaining from it. You want to gain the experience. You want to enjoy your time there. You want to get all the content that you want to capture. You're leaving with a prep of, of shit right. that you can turn into 
talking points on your channel of why people should go do those things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I also get living in the moment and just going there and winging it. And that could also be part of the content. But I do think that maybe that stays part of it. But there is a part of post or pre-production that can be very valuable yeah. where it's, if these are my four days, what can I get the most out of it? Because you might go there and maybe you struggle connecting with anyone. And so mm -hmm. you're not really getting access to experiences and shit. And that kind of sucks. But if you would have done the pre-pro, you would be able to be productive in your production. That's true. Now I'm thinking like I'm flying to India. I'm doing wedding planning there. But I'm like, yo, I should be like, I should be trying to swing some things. Like I'll, I, dude, I have like 30 hours of travel to get there. I should film that whole just be like, this is what it's like to actually fly Bro, 30 fucking hours. It's terrible. That's one video, but also what it's like to plan a wedding in India. Yeah. Like what what it's like for an American to plan a destination wedding in India. Yeah. Or some shit. Yeah, yeah. And then you can document and create an entire thing about this whole process. And it doesn't have to come out now. It can come out after you get married. But like you've done the research. We flew here, which you, the travel alone is a lot. You've probably seen the video. If you haven't yet, check out my 30 hour travel video about flying to India. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're like linking shit. That's just more and more content for the channel. But like, yeah, if you're going to go fucking do some shit that's for you, how else can you like double dip on that thing? It's like, dude, no one, like there's, not a lot of people do that, but there's people that want to get married in India or do like a destination wedding or whatever. Like you're exposing that, you know? Yeah, true. And it's, it's just practice. It's reps as well. So like yeah. by the time I get to Ecuador, I've got, instead of having eight videos down, I've got like 60 or, you know, maybe not that many, but at least I'm practicing dude. saying shit in person versus having to come home and be like, all right, what's my voiceover? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know we've been on for a while, so we can we can wrap up here. Just one one last uh, unless you have anything else you want to say. But um, one we could talk for hours. I know, I know, I know. I enjoy talking with you, too, because I feel like you kind of help me take all this shit that's scattered all over and be like, yo, here's let's bucket it. Let's hone like, it in. Let's hone, hone it in. in. Hone it in. It's, <laughs> yeah, everyone's got the tunnel vision of like. I can do it all. I do it. I do it to myself all the time. Yeah. There's like, oh, I should do this. I should teach a mastermind. I should fucking go produce these videos. I should mm -hmm. start a company. It's, but I think once you like narrow in your focus, that's that's going to find your best success. Yeah, for sure. I And I think that it's like, I can't, like if I'm going to do this, I can't be the best video editor. I can't be the best researcher. I have to be, I have to be like the person that's doing the shit. Yeah, but we can, we can talk another time. Maybe, maybe in a year we can do a, a, I'll let you know how all of this shit yeah, worked out. <laughs> I would like to. That would be a good idea. Let's yeah. do that. Okay. Um. So just last question for you. If anybody wants to check out, like, do you have any anything you want any, any of the listeners to check out or watch or where can they find you if they mm -hmm. if they want to hear more of your more of your ramblings? Yeah. Yeah. No, I share honestly. My Instagram stories is like my favorite thing because I'm that's probably the the easiest way to like truly uh see into my life or whatever i think is interesting and shit yeah and um but I, yeah we have the black and no cream podcast anyone can listen to that there's like 200 and some episodes that we put out since 2016 that are all still highly valuable i still think that you know it's just as if we dropped it today it's mm -hmm. just as good as it was when we interviewed that long ago but i think like from a creative standpoint if there's creators listening and looking for motivation uh there's that there's the community black and no cream podcast we, we started and then i created a community as well so People can join our community if they want to get in there and talk with other creators, find work, things like that. And yeah, I don't know. It's I just share my work is on usually on Instagram. I try to, I don't know, just like I, I don't fucking know. <laughs> you put all your stuff out there. Uh, yeah, all my stuff's on the typical shit. Basically, find and find you on Instagram, and then you'll be dropping links to like the black no cream stuff, and they can hear, like yeah, they can hear like all kinds of chats with creators and content creation yeah dude stuff <laughs> this year I, this year i want to drop we're going to drop the new podcast the goal is to do it in 15 days nice. so mid, mid february so that'll probably be around when this comes out or maybe after. but we're going to drop the new podcast which is like a season so before i did it all just like never ended mm -hmm. every single week now we're doing seasonal mm -hmm. uh uploads so we got 12 really really cool episodes planned to come out over the next three months mm -hmm. um and then what i really really want to do because we've always been so heavily involved in the creative community and having community 
is I want to bring it to like a real world experience. So I really want to put together like a proper event in LA, bringing creators together, networking, having panels, doing a live podcast recording, but like really focusing on allowing creatives to come together. They come together for the one reason, which is mm-hmm. like, oh, they've heard the podcast. They like me, whatever. I want them to all come and meet each other because there's so much power in network and creating that network. So I want to do that and try to hopefully like expand on that over the next couple of years, bring it to New York, bring it to LA, bring it to Paris, wherever, like, you know what I mean? Bringing these creators together um, in like a more event form fashion. That would be cool. So that's going to be sick. Yeah, that's the play. Cool. Well, hopefully I can attend one of the events fun if I'm around that part of the world at that point. Yeah, that'd be really cool. All right. I'm going to stop the recording there.